Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I am Karina Calhoun. I am your host here at Go Be Great with Coach Karina. I am a life and business strategist. I am a consultant. I'm super excited today. I am your introverted ambition bully. Super, super excited. You all know I say all the time that I love all of my guests. Today is no different. I have a very special guest on the show today. Her name is Taylor Worth. And I just want to say, just first before we get into the show, it is the end of the year. This is our last episode of the year, and I am super thrilled. I want to just take a moment to thank all of the amazing guests that have come by the show and have shown love, that have poured out your heart, poured out your gifts to the world through our show. So again, thank you so very much. I This could not have been any better, really and truly. And just so you all know, Go Be Great with Coach Karina is in the top 10% globally. So you all help do that. And I'm truly thrilled to be able to say that. So Again, without further ado, we've got Miss Taylor Worth on the show. Taylor, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I am wonderful. I am wonderful. <laughs> a little birdie told me that today is a special day for you. What is today for you, Taylor? It is my 26th birthday. <laughs> um, I love it. And as you all know, I do pre-show my interviews or pre-interview pre-record my interviews. So even though this is airing at the end of December, we have recorded in November. And if you all remember, I actually said that we were done with 2023 in August. This was the last show that I, last episode that I needed to record. So super thrilled to have you on the show today, Taylor. Taylor, tell us where in the world you are. So I'm located in Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina, but currently I'm on vacation in Costa Rica. What? Come on, girl. 26, your birthday, and on vacation in Costa Rica. I am not mad at you. I love (laughs) it. I absolutely love it. That is absolutely awesome. So we're going to get into that in a little bit, but I want to know, how are you loving on the world around you? Um, how I'm loving on the world around me. I am creating a safe space for women um, of all backgrounds um, to come into my world and feel comfortable, feel safe, um, feel appreciated, feel loved, um, just creating an environment where they can be themselves, where they can be vulnerable, where they can be open, um, where they can just be themselves. I love that. You know, and it's so important that women have that. And you've already told us that you're 26, you've turned 26. And so for you to have that mindset that this is something that women need, uh, you know, to be able to say that, to articulate that, I find that to be absolutely amazing because I cannot say that at 26, I had that frame of mind to say, hey, listen, let me create this for people, specifically for women. And so just the fact that you have done that, I just wanna give you your flowers, okay, today, right now, I wanna give you your flowers publicly because a lot of times we think we are just simply doing life, We're, we're going about our day, we're just, you know, whatever, but a lot of times we don't realize the impact that we're having in the world. And so again, I want to just give you your flowers. I want to tell you thank you. And I and I'm sure you get lots of thank yous from your clients. So you've already told us really the the atmosphere that you are creating for women. What are you doing to create that atmosphere? You have a business, you're an entrepreneur, you're vacationing across the world. So what is the business that you actually have where you are where you are able to really create this environment for women? Um, so I'm a licensed esthetician. I provide full body and facial waxing 
Um, I specialize in intimate care services as well. I allow women to come in, um, like I said, from all backgrounds, all races, all anything. Um, I allow them to come in and, like I said, just allow them to be themselves um, if they need to bring their kids. You know, I don't have any limitations on anything like that. It's really just a safe space where you just come get service. You know, if you want to vent, we can vent. If you need a therapist, I'll be the free therapist. You know, if you want to just get waxed in silence, we can do that too. It's just, you know, it's their world and I want them to be comfortable. I want them to feel like they're at home. And so that's what I, that's what I do. And I absolutely love that. And I love how you create this atmosphere. So what made you decide to not necessarily create this business, but create this specific atmosphere? Why did you decide that this was important, an important piece to your business? So waxing is already very difficult for a lot of people to um, do, go through and experience. It's a very vulnerable um, service and a lot of people are uncomfortable when they go to service providers um, just because of a lot of different things like customer service or, you know, just not feeling like they can be themselves. So I try to, you know, make it so that they can come in and like I said, if they need to bring their their babies in, that's fine because there's a lot of people out here that don't allow stuff like that. Or, um, you know, if they are they have a certain condition, I don't make them feel bad about it. You know, we talk openly about it. I allow them to, you know, talk about their needs, their wants, their desires, and then we go forward from there. Um, I I did this because, like I said, there's not a lot of people in the industry who are this personable in the service. Um, they just are there for the service or there for the money. And I want a different type of experience for my clients. I don't want them to feel like they're just a number or just a client or just a service. You know, I genuinely care about all of my clients, each and every one of them. So I try to make them feel like they're not just coming to me for a service. Like, you know, they're coming for an experience. Absolutely. And and that is key in, in this day and time. It is absolutely key when we want to distinguish ourselves from other businesses, other service providers, what they're providing for us and, and how we feel. You know, it reminds me, I just did, um, I have a, a, a business friend, partner who is writing a book. And one of the questions that they asked, she wanted some feedback and, and things like that. And one of the questions that she asked was, um, what does professionalism look like for you? And and that was, and I answered that question in, in the way that when people come into my world, I want them to really understand that they are top priority, you know, top tier customer service, exquisite customer service, excellent customer service. And it really sounds like that is absolutely 100% what you are delivering to your clients. So I want I want to kind of let folks in on uh, just a small secret, just a teeny, teeny secret. Taylor, do you want to tell them or should I? Go ahead. <laughs> Y'all, she's my daughter. <laughs> she is my daughter. This is my precious, precious woman child. You all have heard me talk about her over the years so many times, so many times. And I wanted to be able to close out this year with her coming on the show and talking to you to really help you understand that anything is absolutely possible. And the reason why I say that is because at least for myself, you know, and I'm just going to get a little transparent, a little vulnerable here. I am a three-time college dropout. You all know that. I tell you that all the time. I'm not ashamed of it. There's nothing for me to, to feel like, you know, I'm less than. I climbed the corporate ladder. I was in a high-level leadership position, even having been a three-time college dropout. And that's perfectly okay. College is not for everyone. I 
heard from my parents, you've got to go to college or you have to go into the military. Having a service service based job, I wanted to go and be a hairdresser, a, a, a stylist, a hairstylist. That I guess I just told my age. I don't care. Hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's my kid. Oh. She laughs. <laughs> But it's okay. It's okay. It is okay. But, you know, I wanted to be a hairstylist and I was told adamantly, no, you cannot do that because there's no money in that. You need to go and get a college degree or you need to go into the military. And I bring that up because, and I've apologized to my daughter, but I, I, you know, that is a, a cycle that I tried to recreate with her. And so I wanted to show that sometimes we unintentionally create these cycles in our families, but we've got to be the bigger person to say, you know what, I recognize it and it does need to stop. So Taylor, I want you to talk just briefly about, so you did go to college and how long were you in college? Um, two years. Two years. Well, over two years. Yeah. and. You came to me one day. I was I was at home. I was working. I was in my office. And I remember you came to me and you had a notebook in your hand. And you said, Mom, I need to talk with you. We need to have a meeting. And I said, OK, sure. And you said, no, this is business. I need you to stop what you're doing. We need to have a meeting. And uh, you sat down and I said, OK, this lady is she's serious. So talk, talk us through what you said, and it may, you know, may not remember everything word for word, but talk us through the conversation and what led to that and how you came to that decision. Because I just have to say, I was extremely impressed with you. Well, the conversation started because, um, I believe I was moving to Charlotte at the time, or I was getting ready to move to Charlotte, or maybe I was already in Charlotte. I think I was already in Charlotte. This was after the pandemic happened. And I had just moved back to Charlotte. And, you know, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't really have a lot of options that I felt were um, my passion or I was passionate about. So, for the longest time, I've always been into makeup and cosmetics and skincare and everything aesthetics, basically. So um, I always had an idea in the back of my mind, and this might come as a surprise to you, that I would be a makeup artist. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I always felt like it wasn't a real job and... I wouldn't make my parents proud and that I wouldn't make money and it wouldn't last and blah, blah, blah. However, I did a little research, you know, during the pandemic when I had a lot of free time and I realized there was more in aesthetics than just makeup. And if I chose to do makeup, that was a possibility, but I didn't have to limit myself to just doing that. Um, so I came to you with this notebook of information and it was basically everything I had researched from schools that I wanted to go to for aesthetics, prices for the schools, what the schools offered as far as curriculum, what I felt would be best for me um, because at the time I thought I would be into skincare so I thought um, or like facial skincare I thought that I would want to do holistic um, skincare. So I brought information about which school was holistic based, which school had different things. Um, I broke down the prices, um, everything. Like I was prepared. I was ready because I was not going to accept a no. <laughs> so I had my notebook ready and yeah, I was just like, here it is. This is what I want to do. What do you think? And yeah, you was like, well, it seems like you have everything in order. You know what you want to do. You have done your research and you supported me. And it just went from there. And, you know, and, I, and I'm so glad you did that because you had to 
really understand within yourself that listen, this cool the school thing is just not for me. Even though it's not for me, I've tried it. I I really gave it a good try. It's not for me. Now let me find what is for me. You know, and the, and when someone does that, you can't do anything but respect them. You know, if you had come to me and said, mm, I don't really know what I want to do. And I know sometimes folks take take gap years and things like that, but you came prepared. I mean, it was yeah. like, okay, if we're gonna tussle, we're gonna <laughs> tussle for real. <laughs> and I and 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 like I said, I, I couldn't do anything but respect it. And and all I could say was, okay, yeah. You seem to have everything. You've got your notebook. You're prepared. And when I say, listen, folks, when she came to me, like she said, she had everything outlined. She had everything outlined, everything detailed. She knew the price of, of so much. She just, she did her work. And so I want to encourage those that are listening, if you feel like you can't take that leap of faith, you absolutely can, 100%. And so I know that you moved to Charlotte, which by the way, you all know, you know, we're from North Carolina. I just happen to live in, in, in Virginia, but you moved back, you moved back to Charlotte. You went to um, aesthetics school. Uh, took your state boards. How many times did times did it take you to take your state boards? Just once. <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> oh my Super goodness. proud of her. She took your state boards one time, passed, and was good to go. And I remember um when you got the results, you were super excited. But so kind of fast forward, you worked at a couple of places and something fantastic, something absolutely fantastic happened. You ended up becoming uh, a member of leadership at a company and we don't have to give names or anything like that, but walk us through that because, you know, when I say that I am impressed, not because this is my kid, but any young woman, young black woman at that who is saying, I will not be held back. I will not stay in the back, but I will do exactly what I feel I can do. I, I just want to talk about the leadership role that you kind of landed in and then what happened after that. And we don't need to go into any details. But what happened after that? And then you started your business. Well, actually, prior to the leadership role, because you're skipping a step. Okay, you know, girl. Okay. The the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> so prior to the, the, the leadership role that I just stepped out of, the initial job that I was working was a salon. It was, I was doing lashes. Um, and when I was in school, I was doing lashes because that's what I thought I would be doing and what I wanted to do. Um, so I had ended up graduating from my aesthetics program in December. And that following week I had gotten a job at the salon, at the lash studio. And you know, a couple months went by and I wasn't really seeing progress like I wanted to see progress. And I just felt like it wasn't for me. I wasn't happy with it. I was just comfortable. So I talked to the owner and, you know, I asked her about offering other services just to see what I would be good at, what I would like to do, just to expand my palette, I guess. And she was not open to it. So at that point, I did have to leave um, because I had to do what was best for me because I wasn't happy. And um, fast forward to the leadership position, I was then offered a job at the salon, um, the second salon that I was at, I was offered a job there. And then four months after working there, I had been transferred to another location to manage one of their 
um, locations in Charlotte. Um, so I had been managing that location for two years. Um, it was two years in June. And that same month, my two year mark, I did end up leaving um, and stepping out on my own, stepping out on faith and um, started to build my business. Um, yeah, within like a couple weeks <laughs> and now I have a business. <laughs> You know, and what I love about all of that is the fact that initially you were at this company and you knew that you were not comfortable where you were. It seemed like it could have been good. It could have been great, but you wanted more. And I think, you know, there's so much that can be unpacked in in, in this episode this is why I'm just like so thrilled that you're on here because I want people to understand understand so much. You don't have to stay stuck in a job, in a business that is not producing the things that you know you're capable of, the impact that you absolutely want to make. And 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 you like you said you went through the normal channels, hey, listen, Mr. Owner, Mrs. Owner, whomever, you know, I have these ideas where I think you could possibly fit this in and grow not only your business, but then also the the um, folks that you have here, the, the, the estheticians that you have here. And so what I always tell people, especially like when I was in corporate America, is the younger generation the millennials, the Gen Zs, um, you're a Gen Z. You know, I, I I don't knock you all because you have such an amazing um, foresight and insight into so many different things. And even you, and I tell you all the time, yes, I'm your mom, but I learn from you. And, and that's absolutely true because I can't sit up here. Yeah, when you were a kid, of course I told you I knew everything. What mom doesn't? <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. Thank you. <laughs> 26 you know, years later. It just took 26 <laughs> years. No big deal. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I look forward to learning from you on a consistent basis because I know that I don't know it all. And I want to learn from you. And so I want those that are listening to be empowered to be encouraged, to be inspired. You don't have to, you don't have to stay in that job. You don't have to stay, you know, if your business is not doing, you know, the things that you want it to do, then you've got options. You yeah, absolutely I, have options. I almost did. I almost stayed because I didn't know that I had options and I didn't know that there was more possibilities for me um, because when I presented the idea of offering other things to said owner, you know, I was kind of knocked down, kicked down a little bit like, oh, you really want to do that? Like, that's not going to work. You know, you're not going to make any money off that. So I didn't think that I would be successful in it. I was like contemplating, maybe I should just stay here and or maybe I should do it part time or maybe I should, you know, I was kind of doubting it. But overall, I just realized that wasn't for me um, because somebody that, you know, cares about me and cares about my career and my future. They want me to succeed, however that looks. And Absolutely. that wasn't the case. Absolutely. 100 percent. 100 percent. However that looks. And I think that's key when we think about the directions that we want to go in, it may not look the same for everyone. It may not look, you know, if, if someone said, Karina, what career would you choose for Taylor? I would not have chosen this. And that's mainly because I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you can articulate your dreams and your aspirations and different things like that to me, but deep inside, you are the one that knows. And so, you know, again, super thrilled, really impressed by you and all that you do. Um, and wanted to say that publicly, 
that, <laughs> you know, again, I give you your flowers, not just because you're my kid, but because you are a woman who I can say, if you need some type of inspiration, encouragement, go see her, go talk to her. She's got wisdom. And so tell us the, the name of your business. Tell us how you came up with the name and tell us how to get in touch with you. The name of my business is called Cloud9 Aesthetics. I came up with the name because, um, so at home, my own bed, I have all white bed sheets and comforter and pillows and everything. And every time I get in my bed, I'm always like, it just feels like a cloud. Like I feel like I'm sleeping on a cloud. I'm comfortable. I'm safe. You know, I'm also an, int an introvert. So I love being at home. I love being in the comfort of my own bed and just being cozy and comfortable. And one day I was laying in the bed and thinking, like trying to think of, I don't even think I was trying to think of a business name, but I just thought like, you know, I want my business to be like this. Like I want people to feel comfortable how I feel comfortable when I'm at home in my cloud. Or I want people to feel safe how I feel safe when I'm behind these four walls. Or, you know, I was just like, I kind of want that same idea with my business because I feel like, like I said before, in this specific field with waxing specifically, it is, you know, there are a lot of, places and you know businesses that are not a comfortable setting so i wanted to kind of set myself apart um as far as that so i did decide to name it cloud nine aesthetics and you can find me on instagram at cloud nine aesthetics clt um my website is cloud nine aesthetics clt.com yeah, that's where you can find me. Or on TikTok at six dot worth S I X dot W O R T H. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Taylor, any last words of wisdom for anyone that's that's listening or watching this episode? Because um again, there's there's so much that you have to offer. I would just say if you have an idea. Um, regardless of what it looks like to anybody else or even what it looks like to you at the moment, I would still say go for it. Um, you know, do your research thoroughly. And if it's meant to be, it will work out um, and it will be successful. You'll be successful, but you have to believe in yourself. You know, there are going to be a lot of people along the way that don't believe in you, that don't see the vision, that don't see the path that you're trying to walk, but it's not for everybody to understand. Um, and a lot of times those people aren't meant to come with you on your journey anyway. So it doesn't matter what they think or, you know, if they, if they agree with you, you know, just go for it. Just do it because you just never know how it can turn out. You just never know. I love it. I absolutely love it. And we may have you come back to the show to talk about that because that is very, very important. You know, those people that you have on the journey with you, some sometimes they only meant to go just a few steps and then they got to go on their own way. But folks, this has been another amazing episode of Go Be Great with Coach Karina. I've had on the show today an extremely special guest. I tell you all, all of my guests are special. I love literally every last one of my guests. This one though, I've loved her all her life, <laughs> all her life. And so thank you all for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for making 2023 absolutely phenomenal. And we're going to rock 2024 even more. So I will see you all on the flip side.